Paul, I know you know this. A lot of uh, Afghanistan veterans say they have personally some very complicated, conflicting feelings about what's happening right now. But from a political standpoint, from a military standpoint, what do you make of how uh, the Biden administration is handling this? I think it's a mixed bag. Uh, they, they've gotten some things right and they've gotten some things terribly wrong. I think most agree that it's time to get out, that, that the biggest threat to America's national security is not in Afghanistan. It's things like domestic extremism and cyber attacks. Uh, we know this has been coming. Many of our allies are, are headed out with us, but there's a real feeling that we're doing it the wrong way, that we're washing our hands too quickly, that we're leaving our allies to die. And we're kind of putting the whole thing in our rearview mirror without a recognition that what we've created may fail. We may have more than just a civil war, we may have a humanitarian disaster on our hands, where, to most veterans, importantly, our allies are being left to die. Many have already been slaughtered. They're being slaughtered today, tomorrow. And there's a feeling that the Biden administration didn't have a plan to get them somewhere safely. They should already be on planes. They should already be somewhere safe. There's a proposal to get them to Guam. But it seems like there are elements of this rollout uh, that the Biden uh, administration just didn't have squared away in time. Well, let me ask you about that specifically, because the Pentagon is rushing right now, they say, to find places outside of Afghanistan to send thousands of translators until they can be brought to the U.S. Our Richard Engel spoke to one translator uh, who was part of more than 150 combat operations, but he says he's been waiting four years to get his visa approved. You see him there. Look, Richard looked at all the paperwork. Take a listen to what he told Richard. You helped the U.S. Now the U.S. needs to help you. Yep. Simple as that. Yeah, yeah. Right now we need a help. So U.S. Army, the U.S. government had to help us. That translator uh, says, Paul, that his colleagues are already being killed. Uh, is that part of your point? We can't afford to wait at all to get them out. Yes. It's more than, than a military and strategic imperative. It's a moral imperative for America. This is about the soul of who we are. And it's not just about Afghanistan. It's about sending a message to the world that if you stand with America for 20 years, you risk your life, you put your family on the line, that when the end comes, we won't leave you hung out to dry. We won't leave you to be slaughtered. There is precedent to move people to American territories like Guam. And let's break this down on a more simple level. This is the United States. We just put a robot on Mars, and the White House is telling us that they can't get our friends out of Afghanistan. It's too many excuses. It's, it's not enough detail. And the reality is it's an evolving situation where heroes, people who stood alongside me and countless others in places like Iraq and Afghanistan and around the Middle East, are dying. I've got two interpreters that serve with me in Iraq that are living in America now. One's in Connecticut. One's in, in Tennessee. They're thriving. One of my interpreters is still in Iraq or might be dead. I don't know what happened to him. That's happening now across Afghanistan and to families throughout the military and the active duty that are very concerned about these heroic people that have stood with America and are being left to die. Finally, I want to play a little bit more of what President Biden had to say yesterday and get your reaction on the other side. Nearly 20 years of experience has shown us that the current security situation only confirms that just one more year of fighting in Afghanistan is not a solution, but a recipe for being there indefinitely. It's up to the Afghans to make the decision about the future of their country. It, we we um, wonder what their abilities are. Um, you know, Courtney was talking about the fact about how well trained they are, how um, frankly, how many of them there are, that the Air Force is in much better position, but then you also have in some of the rural areas, people just giving up. What is your assessment, having spent so much time there, having talked to so many people, knowing it intimately? What, what is your very real assessment of what you are going to be watching for in the coming weeks and months? I, I think we're going to watch a deteriorating in a security situation and, and a slaughter and potentially a humanitarian disaster. I think Biden's got it half right. Yes, we have to leave. We understand that. We don't want a forever war. But how we leave is absolutely critical. And it's up to him not just to decide to move troops out, but how is he going to protect women on the ground? How is he going to protect our interpreters? What's he going to do about Pakistan? If the Taliban overruns the country and he loses the next election, is another American president going to send us back in? We have a history here. Many, many times we've abandoned the Kurds. We've abandoned allies in Syria. There's a real feeling here like we're talking out both sides of our mouth. And to people on the ground and people in the military, they 
feel like they've been jerked around for decades and even generations. So he's got to get it clear and he's got to present a comprehensive plan for withdrawal that doesn't that recognizes that maybe the Afghans won't do it. And then what are we going to do? That's the question he's got to answer if this continues to spiral downward.